Oh, trust me. Trust me, I watched all your streams by this point. Okay. With uh, Alfest, but <laughs> yeah, um, I've um watched your content for probably about a year or maybe a little over a year mm -hmm. by this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you went and you went back and watched the earlier ones, then if you saw the LFS stuff, because I think it's been yeah, it's been longer than that, probably. Since it, it's been a it. while. I yeah, I definitely watched back, and then I noticed a lot of pitfalls that you went in, and I'm like, holy crap! I went through these same pitfalls after the fact that I did my first installation. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh god. Yeah, uh... <laughs> I think the, the my favorite thing that I did completely wrong is this is why you make sure you always check your variables. Um, I did a chamod and also make sure you do it in a virtual machine because I did a chamod and I chamodded the root of my virtual machine, not the root of LFS. So that caused issues. <laughs> And and the thing about me and LFS mm. is I I installed it about ten plus times by this point. Mm. I completely lost count, but mm. I've only did one installation in a virtual machine and I couldn't even get it to boot. <laughs> so that was fun. When but it was more reliable to actually get it to boot on actual hardware. I assume you doing it on a hardware isn't on like a like, when I say do it in a virtual machine, like, I mean, don't do it on, like, your production machine, right? If you're going to do it on hardware, that's fine, but don't do it on, like, your actual machine that you intend to use unless you are willing to completely kill it. Well, well you see, I, I, I'm literally running out of first on my gaming rig right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I... Okay, I, I need to ask, why? Why are you doing the LFS thing? Before we get into anything else, just... Just why? What's wrong with anything else? Well, most... Mostly, the, the biggest reason is just because I love Linux, and I think my affinity for Linux has gotten too far. Right. But, uh, another reason is just that it makes me feel yucky when there's software on my system that I haven't actually compiled besides, you know, the NVIDIA driver and Steam. Mm -hmm. But other, other than that, I want every system, not every system, but every software on my computer to be compiled by myself. Mm -hmm. Wait, so Otherwise, you're... I just feel yucky. Wait, so you're an NVIDIA LFS user. So... All of those people that complain about how difficult yeah. it is to install NVIDIA drivers on, like, a regular system and have them work fine? You're doing on LFS. Oh, it's easy, it's easy on LFS. Okay. It's it's completely easy on LFS. There's there's no problem at all. You Because with the NVIDIA driver, like, um, many distros just ship a package and it has all the libraries, mm. all the, the kernel... Mm -hmm. um driver that comes with it and sometimes some actual utilities like nvidia settings mm -hmm. but on lfs you just go to the nvidia site you have a run file you run it with bash mm -hmm. and just follow the prompt and bam you just have it installed just mm -hmm. like that very 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 simple hmm so you're not doing like any sort of package management then, or do you have like a like a, a a script you use for stuff? Like what when you're installing applications, do you I, have a system for it, or is it just you wing it basically? I basically just follow the LFS and BLFS guides, mm -hmm. and some I I diverge a little bit because there's a lot of packages on Beyond Linux from scratch that just are on there mm -hmm. like um steam and wine for example mm -hmm. but otherwise i i don't use a package manager i just follow the guides hmm okay w one thing you did touch on before was you don't like the idea of not having software you've compiled is it specifically compiling the software or is it not wanting to have additional software because obviously something like gen 2 you could also do that but there are going to be additional packages there that you don't really care about that might get added. So is it specifically the um, 
So, yeah, what what's specifically about the LFS instead of something like Gen 2, for example? Well, it is it is false because um because like um for I'm just gonna point out Arch because I think it's completely stupid how Arch does it. It just pulls in random dependencies that aren't even required. Mm -hmm. And if you look on a lot of packages, it says it depends on system D, but in reality, it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just the way Arch packages the software, it makes it so it depends on system D. Mm -hmm. And so it's it just pulls in a lot of dependencies that I don't need with Gen 2. Mm -hmm. um, it also pulls in some dependencies, but it's not as bad as Arch. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of just having complete control over what's going to be pulled in. You're only going to pull in the dependencies that actually are like hard dependencies. And obviously optional ones that you find useful, but if something doesn't have any place on your system, then you're just not going to bother adding it, and basically it stops there. Yeah, or if I'm just completely lazy and I don't feel like compiling an ex extra package that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which okay. is sometimes a bad idea when you're compiling Firefox that has recommended dependencies, but you only have to install the required dependencies, but those recommended dependencies are for security. Mm. And if you don't use those recommended dependencies, then you will have kind of a worse experience with Firefox overall because of worse security. So what sort of hardware are you running on your system? Like what what sort of compiled time... Actually, he answer that question, but also like a rough sort of case for compiling, you know, big applications like Firefox, the kernel, and then maybe some examples of smaller ones as well. So I'm just going to talk about my CPU. It just has 12 threads on it. Okay. It's, um, it's six cores. Mm -hmm. I think it's six cores and then 11... The uh, 12 threads. Mm -hmm. um, as for compilation times, Firefox takes about like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that GCC takes like 20 minutes, I think. So GCC ends up taking longer than Firefox to compile. Mm -hmm. um, what was your other question again? Uh, like, if, how long does the Linux kernel take? Um... It depends because the first compilation is, of course, um, the longest. Right. But if you recompile the kernel, I notice that it doesn't take as long. Mm -hmm. Even if you upgrade, it still doesn't take as long as it did that very first time. Okay. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. I haven't compiled the kernel in a while, and I, I should get on that. But, um, yeah, it takes about... 10 minutes. Okay, okay. Hmm. So... It's if... not very long, but it doesn't take as long as Firefox. Right, right. So... You mentioned, like, wanting to not have additional things that you just don't need. But how much are you actually running on your system? Do you keep a fairly clean system? Do you have a bunch of extra things that you've added over the time you've been using the system? Do you every so often clean things out? Like... Because my system is a mess, to say the least. I I have a lot of yeah. things I've installed. <laughs> because when you have packages, it's very easy to install things and just forget about them. But I would imagine it's a lot easier to... A lot easier to keep that in check when everything you add is an additional thing you have to worry about compiling when you want to upgrade. Yeah, I... I think about it in terms of just what I need and mm -hmm. what software I know I need to run or want to run. For example, like having Mupin 64 Plus on my system, I know I'm going to want that because I love playing Nintendo 64 games mm -hmm. legally. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I just have that on my system plus everything 
else, but I don't really install extra packages mm -hmm. except Surf because I wanted to give that a try. But installing the WebGTK package was an absolute nightmare, and I never want to do that again. So now I just have those extra packages just laying on my system, mm -hmm. and I hate it. But I know that it's there, and I know that I installed it. Mm -hmm. So I still I still have those packages in the back of my mind, knowing, hey, I have these extra packages, but I don't need them. Right. So uh, the other part of that question was like, how much, how how much do you think you really have installed on your system? If you were to look at it in the context of like a regular systems package management, like. If you could estimate what that would look like, I, I, it might be hard depending on like the context of the system. But if you can possibly give a number on that, though, I guess I would give some context on like how much you really have installed. Kind of like the package count that NeoFetch just dumps mm. in its output. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, Elvis might have like. LFS might have like um I think it's like uh maybe eighty or ninety packages on um, BLFS might be like two hundred maybe. Okay. Three hundred. Okay. I I guess we're gonna go in a ballpark of just having four hundred packages mm -hmm. on my system. I think that might be an accurate package count. Well, obviously, most things are not going to be like Firefox, right? Like, most things you have are going to be things where they take maybe five, ten seconds, maybe a minute to compile at the worst. The projects like Firefox, yeah. like the kernel, those are very few and far between. 